so hello hello everyone uh, welcome to this uh, third uh, lecture of this uh, series hands on machine learning so we are going to learn today the fundamentals we will be seeing that thing um, first of all i will thank you everyone that uh, uh, you are watching this video and your support is overwhelming and really liked it and uh, if you like our video then please uh, like it uh, share it subscribe it and uh, second thing is uh, that uh, uh, we have a rule for every video, uh, for every lecture we are doing that uh, you have to comment below uh, any query you have or what you have learned from this video. Yes, do it because it will be more interactive for us and I will be knowing that uh, you are actually getting it or not. Okay, so okay, uh, this is going to be a free course but I want it to be very much interactive and I, I am going to support you at every level which I can do it. Okay, so yeah please cooperate and we'll be uh, doing the best in the machine learning so um we have uh, today's agenda um so here today's agenda is just to end the basic theory we'll be going to complete the basic theory of machine learning uh, in the previous two videos we have learned about uh, some basic um, fundamentals of the machine learning that what is the machine learning why use machine learning and and some terms also Okay, so today we are going to learn the batch learning, online learning, instance based learning, model based learning and what are the challenges we are going to face. Okay, so we are talking, uh, we'll be talking about this all the things one by one. So let's start from the batch learning. Okay, without wasting any time, we are just going to see this thing. So what is the batch learning? Uh, you have some, you will be getting some idea that uh, there is an online learning and there is a batch means maybe it will be something like offline learning yes you are correct that it is online learning and it is offline learning somewhat okay so what is actually the batch learning is so batch learning is actually that you are you are just doing um, the whole model training in one go okay so it is like that it is it is training on all available data and you just think that if you have a lot of data and you are just training your model then it will take a lot of time and computing resources and it can be done only offline okay so that is also called the offline learning so you know um, but uh, just think that you have just made a model and uh, you have just uh, deployed but uh, but with the time with the time there is uh, a world continues to evolve with more uh, evolve as time goes on so there there will be a data drift or model rot so you have to change actually you have to regularly retrain your uh, model so uh, retraining the model from scratch every time will take a lot of money lot of time and computing power okay so we can't afford that thing so uh, being economic what we'll be doing that we'll be doing a online learning so we will be seeing what is the online learning. We actually feed the data in a small batches, mini batches. This is called this is called the mini batches. Feeding the data instances sequentially means one by one we are feeding the data, something like this. And like you can just think that online learning is useful for the system that need to adapt the change extremely rapidly. Like to detect the new patterns in the stock market you need to be very uh, precise about it and you have to be very flexible so that is where the online learning takes is actually that takes place and it is the important there okay so what it does actually so it is actually does it load the part of data run the training step and repeat the process uh, of all the data actually it uh, you know if you, if you want to eat um, food then you just take uh, take uh, a small a small a small amount of uh, food and you just uh, eat it okay so that is something like that that you can't just eat uh, one uh, everything at once you just eat in uh, some uh, batches okay so that is called the mini batches you can just have uh, this thing that from the data you have trained the model then you will evaluate that it is good or bad okay and if it's launched then you will run and learn and then you will be retraining it online version uh, by the mini batches okay mini batches of the data so actually we will be doing this thing uh, in the further uh, videos 
and that will give us more clarity that what is going to be uh, the thing okay so this was actually the um, online learning okay now uh, there is a one parameter we need to understand it and actually it will come um, in the machine learning part uh, further that is the learning rate you can just think that uh, everyone has a different learning rate like uh, maybe uh, you and your friend like you you will be learn faster than your friend so that is called the learning rate that how fast that should adapt the changing data okay like how fast a model will adapt to the changing data but do you think that a higher learning rate means very good so there is a catch actually that if you learn more and more and more and more then you will be missing out many things and if you learn very slowly then you will be getting the things but will you will be getting the things all uh, but you will not uh, complete much things so you have to have a balance in between the more and uh, less so there will be something like medium uh, learning rate okay so what is the big challenge of the online learning a big challenge of online learning is that if you feed if you just feed the bad data in the system then what will happen the the accuracy will uh, accuracy or performance will uh, drop suddenly and if it is a live system then your client will notice yes so this is a big challenge so what uh, how to, like uh, how you can tackle it so you can tackle on the input data of course that you, if your data is good or not so from this thing there will be one thing that there is a good data or bad data something like that so we will be seeing all this thing just uh, some minute after okay after after uh, doing this thing so what is the instance so we have completed this thing uh, batch learning and online learning let's quickly uh, go to the instance based versus uh, model based learning what is the instance based learning what is the model based learning so actually instance based is something that uh, you have you have actually learn something from the heart and then generalizes it to the new cases yeah something like that 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 this is the this is one of the picture i am trying to explain you that uh, you know in this uh, picture there are a lot of triangles triangles are more so when uh, like machine is learning that uh, there are a lot of triangles then the new 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 samples will be also the triangles that is that is that is somewhat uh, vague that is not a uh, uh, sensible thing so it is the same with the machine that uh, it actually does this so it is called the instance based learning we will be seeing this thing uh, with the real life example also but uh, let's have a let's have a model model based learning approach so what a model will do that it actually what will do that it will actually build a model of this examples and it will predict it will predict that okay this new sample will be uh, maybe uh, it will be a triangle or uh, maybe it will be a rectangle okay so this is what uh, um, the actually model based learning and uh, instance based learning is so we'll be we are going to see the uh, real life example that what it actually so uh, like a real life example is that uh, your friends or you uh, just know uh, like uh, know a thing that uh, where is uh, where is the particular restaurant so it will be easy for you to just go there okay so that is called the instance based learning but model based learning is that uh, you don't know any restaurant but you try to find from the uh, boards or uh, board uh, sign markers okay so that is called the model based learning so why model based learning is more important i will say that uh, uh, we actually does the uh, training on a data but we do the testing or we have actually need to uh, implement the things on new data or the new scenarios so if it will work in the new scenarios then that is the good for us so that's the model based learning so what is the pros of uh, instance based learning is it actually the quick decision that if you know the way of the restaurant before then it will be very easy for you to go there navigate there okay but cons is there that uh, if the things are very different from it 
what is nose okay like if uh, there is a new restaurant then uh, you don't know the way then the instance based learning will not able to help you but the model model based learning will what will do that it will uh, it, it is good at handling different situations and more thoughtful decision making okay it can read the signs something like that uh, i can i will read the signs and go or i will ask someone that where to go uh, for the new restaurant okay but yeah uh, takes more time to learn the rules initially so it takes some time to learn the things but yeah it is better uh, for the real life uh, scenarios okay fine so uh, we have completed one or two and now we have a challenges so we are talking about good and bad data so what it is that so just think that uh, i am just i want to just you just think that uh, if you have a data uh, for flowers but that is blurry so the model will not able to identify the thing that okay this is the picture but it will not work efficiently if it is a blurry picture so that is the uh, that is somewhat uh, that is a one of the example of bad data but just see that uh, what uh, the problems we face uh, with the bad data so that is the insufficient quantity of training data actually you know uh, their uh, machine learning model actually needs a lot of data to train and if you have less data then actually uh, it will be uh, tough to teach the machine that okay this is uh, the particular thing just think that if uh, we will show a picture of uh, apple to a child then it will learn that okay this is apple but if you if you don't have almost 10 20 pictures of uh, apple then it will not able to identify the uh, apple okay so we uh, we have to like machine is somewhat noob in this case but okay so uh, there is a second thing that unreasonable effectiveness of data yeah like you need more data for the better uh, better instances and better performance okay and uh, a better data is more important than a fancy algorithm yeah uh, you need better data so that you can make uh, it better okay fine so non representative training data you just think that uh, there are a lot of data but uh, there will be some um, extra data that will not representing the actual thing like um, like for the machine learning to work well the training data must represent what a model will face in the real world if not the prediction will not accurate now um, there is a sampling bias that uh, sometimes your data has some biases like uh, maybe your data has a, um, like maybe uh, your data has a picture uh, if you have a picture data and you have uh, more data of uh, females okay so you will be you will be having a better uh, better chances for uh, generating the um, female faces or female portraits uh, instead of men so that is something like sampling biases so um, like there is a poor quality data also like if the data has errors noise outliers just think that you have a data of uh, male and female faces and there will be some also pictures of uh, uh, some blurred pictures are there uh, there are some pictures of dogs cats then that will be something like noise errors outliers okay and irrelevant features you can just think that um, uh, like it is it is something like that if you have you have a data of uh, of a person like a person is graduated or a person is not graduated where uh, where he learned and there is a also face data is there that he is uh, fair dark skinned or something like that and you are predicting from that data is that he will be able to do a particular job or not so your face data or the dark or skinny tone does not decide actually that uh, uh, the person will able to work or able to um, uh, do the particular task or not it is totally based on uh, his learnings uh, where he uh, studied or something like that okay i hope you got it now we'll be uh, seeing that what is the bad, bad algorithms what are the challenges with bad algorithms so quickly uh, we see that there is a overfitting and underfitting that when you learn when you learn and make the your model too complex then you know like it struggles with the new data when you when you when you will be too much in the complexity of the data then it will be actually tough 
for your data to actually act on the new data. Then there will be underfitting data that you haven't learned much of the training data. Then that is also the problem. So, you know, you have to be in somewhat middle that uh, you are learning the things, but, uh, but there are, you are learning the things, but not over learning it. So, that is the important thing. And there is hyper parameter tuning and model selection. It is, it is only, uh, it is the important thing because we'll be doing this thing all over the time. A hyper, hyper parameter tuning is actually, you know, it is like trying different recipes. So trying, try, we are picking the best models to do a particular task for the different task for the different data, different type of model will work. So that is what the hyper parameter tuning is. Okay. Then there will be uh, data mismatch will be there and there is no free lunch theorem. It is like that choosing a model as picking tools for a job, no, no tool is always the best. Means that no tool is always the best for everything. Okay. Not a person can do every task. So, if a person, if I am doing machine learning, maybe I will, I will not able to do uh, such complex DSA questions, but anyone is doing DSA questions, he will be not doing uh, the machine learning. So, it is like that no model is perfect in every situation. So, we choose based on its working that what the, what the model will work best. Okay. So, I hope you got this thing very easy, uh, easily. So, now, now the thing is that uh, you just comment below that any query you have anything because I want you to think uh, about this thing that any problem you will face or anything uh, you uh, don't understand then please uh, write below and uh, if, uh, if you don't have any questions then write below what you have learned actually. So I hope that uh, it helped you uh, in the next video we will be actually coding it I uh, will be start coding the things. So for that, there will be prerequisite. Python will be the prerequisite. I will I will just uh, give the resource link in the description. You can just go there and learn the things. Uh, Python Python will be there, uh, and uh, you can also learn NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib. That will be also beneficial for you. So I hope uh, you love this video. Please like it, uh, subscribe it, and share it to the people who are really interested. Thank you so much. Meet you in the next video.